Hi, I'm Susie Rhodes with Past Masters. Welcome to this week's Topic of the Week. This week, our topic is Regulation of Investment Advisors. You can expect this topic to appear on your Series 63, Series 65, and Series 66 exams. We will be taking a 20-question topic quiz from within one of our Past Masters Securities courses. Let's check out our learning management system. A person advertises investment advisory services. Which of the following is true? This person is exempt from registration. This person must register as an investment advisor. This person must register as an agent or if this person actually gives investment advice, they must register as an investment advisor. So what you'll do is pick what you believe is the correct answer. I believe it is B. Click check answer. You know you got it right if you get a green check mark. If you would like to reinforce your knowledge, you can click show explanation. There is also an audio explanation for every one of our questions. A person advertises investment advisory services. That's me. The minute a person advertises investment advisory services, it doesn't matter whether or not they ever give investment advice, they must register as an investment advisor. So remember the investment advisor is the firm the word person is used very broadly, so must register as an investment advisor. Which of the following multi-state advisors would be required to register at the state level? Choices include one that is required to register in 25 states. They would register federally. One that is required to register in 32 states would also register federally. One that is required to register in 14 states or one that is required to register in 15 states. So if it's a multi-state advisor that is required to register in 15 states or higher, they register with the SEC, so at the federal level. It's when the multi-state advisor has under 15 states that they're registering in that they are required to register at the state level. So remember, the firm, the investment advisor, is either going to register at the federal level or at the state level. So when they are Multi-state advisors in 15 or more states, that's federal registration. So under 15 states, state registration. The chief compliance officer of an investment advisory firm is responsible for the supervision of all supervised persons. All of the following are considered supervised persons except so reword that. Who is not considered a supervised person? Any person who provides investment advice on the advisor's behalf would be a supervised person. Employees of the firm, supervised persons, yes. Officers, partners, and directors of the firm are also supervised persons. Customers, customers are not considered to be supervised persons. Which law requires investment advisors to act as fiduciaries and place their clients' interests above their own? So we have four federal laws. How do I know that they're federal laws? They all include a year. So when the law includes a year, it is federal law. State securities law is the Uniform Securities Act, sometimes referred to as the USA. So here we have four federal laws. Investment Company Act of 1940, that governs investment companies, so pooled, pooled funds, 
pooled investment vehicles like mutual funds. Those are regulated under the Investment Company Act of 1940. Securities Act of 1933, that's commonly called the Paper Act. It requires registration of all new issues and that a prospectus be given out whenever a new issue is sold. Investment Advisors Act of 1940, I like that one, but let's check the last one. We have the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, commonly referred to as the People Act. It is the people that do the exchanging. So it has to do with who has to register as a registered representative, who's a broker dealer. It is the Investment Advisors Act of 1940 that requires investment advisors to act as fiduciaries. So a fiduciary must always place their client's interests above their own. Financial planners are excluded from the definition of investment advisor at the state level, excluded from the definition of investment advisor at the federal level, only considered investment advisors if they have more than 10 public clients, or included within the definition of investment advisor at the state and federal level. That is the correct answer. So financial planners, they're not talking about your friend Joe, they're talking about the firm, the firm level. Financial planners are included within the definition of investment advisor, both at the state and federal levels. Under state law, now that's important. So you're always a detective when you're reading these questions. Is it a question under state law or federal law? If you can't remember if they're different, they are most of the time the same, but there are some differences. So it's important to keep track of what's this question asking. So under state law, an investment advisor that has discretionary authority over a client's funds and or securities, but does not have custody, must maintain a minimum net worth of choices include $10,000, $100,000, $150,000, or $15,000. When the investment advisor has discretion, so the ability to choose what securities to buy and sell and when, but not custody, so does not have physical access to the client's money or securities, the minimum net capital requirement Net worth, assets minus liabilities, required under state law is $10,000. An investment advisory firm is reorganized mid-year. The successor firm, choices include, must register under the same form ADV as the original firm. No, they actually need to do their own form ADV, must pay a fee. No, must register and pay a new fee. Must register is true, but pay a new fee is false. So the successor firm is required to register using a new form ADV, but is allowed to use the unexpired portion of the previous firm's filing fee. So that's nice. So no fee is due until the renewal. A person who sells Market reports must register as an investment advisor, would not be considered an investment advisor, would only be considered an investment advisor if the reports were published more frequently than quarterly, would only be considered an investment advisor at the federal level. A person who sells market reports must register as an investment advisor. Under state law, an investment advisor that does not have discretionary authority over a client's funds and or securities or custody, so no discretion, no custody, but does accept prepayment of fees of more than $500 per client six months or more in advance must maintain a minimum net worth Choices include of $150,000, of $15,000, of $10,000, or that is positive. So no discretion, state law, no custody. They have to maintain a positive net worth.
At the time of the updating amendment, which of the following statements is false? A firm with assets under management of 107 million must be registered federally. A firm with assets under management of 120 million must register federally. A firm with assets under management of under 90 million must register at the state level. Or a firm with assets under management of 100 million can choose to register at either the state or federal level. So we're looking for the false statement. So let me show you something here. When we talk about registration of the firm, so we're talking about the investment advisor. The investment advisor is either going to register with the SEC, which would be the federal registration, or they're gonna register at the state level. So they don't register at both levels, they register at one or the other. And the most used determining factor for where they register is the size of assets under management. So if the size of assets under management is 100 million or more, they register with the SEC. So if you think about the pool of money that an investment advisor manages, how often does that change? Every single day. So that their assets under management go up and they go down and up and down and all, the, all the time. The firm is never going to be required to switch registration from state to federal or federal to state any more frequently than one time a year at the time of filing their annual updating amendment. So we have to give a little bit of a buffer. So there is this 20% buffer. So if we take the 100 million, right? So we know 100 million or more, they register at the federal level, which means that if it's less than 100 million, they register here at the state level. 20% of 100 million is 20 million. So we get these two thresholds. So we have 110 million and we have 90 million. So if the firm, for example, was federally registered and at the time of their annual updating amendment, they were here below 90 million, they must switch from federal to state registration. If they were state registered and at the time of their annual updating amendment, they were above 110 million, they must switch from state to federal. It's in between the 110 and the 90 where they can choose to either stay where they re were registered the previous year or switch their registrations. But it doesn't become a must until you go above 110 or below 90 million. So let's go back to this question and see if it doesn't make more sense to us now. So a firm with assets of 107 million, are they in that buffer? Yes, so they must register federally is false. A firm with assets under management of 120 million must register federally. So are they above the buffer? Yes, they must register federally, that's true. A firm with assets under management of under 90 million must register at the state level, also true. A firm with assets under management of 100 million, so they're in the buffer, right, between 110 and 90, can choose to register at either the state or federal level, that is true. So we're looking in this question, remember, we're looking for what is false. So it is that first choice that is false. A firm with assets under management of 107 million must be registered federally. That is false, false. If it was their initial registration, then it would be a different answer. Then the answer would have been yes, they must register federally. But the question says, at the time of the updating amendment. So they don't have to switch from state to federal until they're over 110 million. So be careful on that, that can be tricky. Which of the following would be required to register as an investment advisor? A person who gives investment advice to pay off debt and have an emergency fund. Eh, that 
doesn't have anything to do with securities, so no. A person who gives investment advice to buy fixed annuities. Mm, no, not a security. Not a security, so no. A person who gives investment advice to buy specific stocks. Yes, let's check the last one. A person who gives investment advice to buy indexed annuities. Indexed annuities are not considered securities. So if you give advice about securities, you must register as an investment advisor. A federally registered investment advisor without a place of business in Montana can do business without registration with all of the following except. There is a de minimis rule when you are an investment advisor that allows you to do a little bit of business with public customers in another state without registration. The de minimis rule only applies to investment advisors and investment advisor representatives. It does not apply to broker dealers or agents. That's not what this quiz is about, but after doing this for as many years as I have, I know what confuses students. So be very careful. De minimis only for investment advisors and IARs. So we want to see who they can do business with without registration in Montana. Bonafide pre-existing clients who are visiting Montana. The investment advisor can do business with them without registration. It's also true that the investment advisor can do business with other financial institutions without registration in that state. So broker dealers in Montana, that would be allowed without registration. Institutional investors in Montana also would be allowed without registration. The last choice, six or more individual clients who live in Montana, no, if that were the case, then that investment advisor would have to register in Montana. So the de minimis rule allows for five or fewer, five or fewer. Another way of saying that is less than six. So this said six or more. So the test, just be really careful. They're gonna either say five or fewer or less than six. That is the de minimis. So if you are an investment advisor and you have five or fewer public clients in a state, you do not have to register in that state. A person providing specific investment information related to specific securities via email would be required to register as an agent, eh, required to register as a broker dealer, required to register as an investment advisor, or exempt from registration as an investment advisor. Giving specific advice, it doesn't matter the medium, whether it's in person or via email, you must register as an investment advisor. Under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, investment advisors must register. Choices include at the state level, with FINRA, at both the state and federal level, or with the SEC. So this, is, this could be a tricky question. So let's think about it. Do you see a year in this question? Mm -hmm. So whose law is this? Hmm, federal. So with the SEC, investment advisors, under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, must register with the SEC. Now that does not mean all investment advisors register with the SEC. It's just the correct answer to this question. Regarding registration, which statement is false? Investment advisors with assets under management of less than 110 million must register at the state level. An investment advisor can be expected to switch registration levels no more frequently than once a year. That is true. Advisors with assets under management below the threshold are required to register with the state. That is true. Below the threshold is a nice way of saying that the law may change over time. The threshold of 100 million, 100 million or more being federal and under 100 million being state. Uh, it hadn't, it was way lower than that eh, a while back, but it hadn't changed in decades. So when it did finally change, um, you know, the size of assets under management, we hope to live in this 
uh, perpetual bull economy where the assets are always getting bigger. So that over time, the threshold amount, the 100 million or more could change. So I'm guessing that's why the question is worded this way, where when you write a test question, you don't want to have to change it every time the law changes because that's a pain. So that would be that uh, advisors with assets under management below the threshold are required to register with the state is true. Advisors with assets under management above the threshold are required to register with the SEC is true. So we're looking for the false statement. It's that first statement. Investment advisors with assets under management of less than 110 million must register at the state level. No. So it goes back to that 20% buffer, right? Where at the time of the annual updating amendment, if it's over 110, you must switch to federal registration. Under 90, you must switch to state registration. You meaning the firm. So I say you, but it's the firm level registration which is not correct regarding federally covered advisors. So we're looking for the false statement. They pay filing fees at the state and federal level. That is true. They only pay filing fees at the state level. That is false. So that should be the right answer, but let's read all four choices. Always read all four choices before picking what you believe is the correct answer. They must register with the SEC and not the state. That is true. They must do a notice filing at the state level. That is true. So they're registered federally, but they do notice filings in the states that they're required to do notice filings in. They pay fees at both the state and federal level. So this is the false statement. I cannot tell you how weird it feels to pick what is wrong, but you have to pick the wrong answer or the wrong statement, false statement, if that's what the question's looking for. So a lot of times when students miss a question, it's not that you didn't know it. It's that you just got caught, caught up in this, mm, I don't like to pick what's wrong, but that's okay. Sometimes it's asking you for what is wrong. So I would literally write on your scratch paper, erasable whiteboard thingy, the A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, and then I'd write true, false, false, true, or what, you know, whatever it happens to be, I suppose, true, false, 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 or whatever, backwards could be the case as well, depending upon what the question's looking for. So one of these, one of these should stand out as being, which one of these things does not belong here? I can't sing, but I did love Sesame Street as a kid. Regarding books and records related to the investment advisory business, which of the following is true? Records must be kept for three years, two years readily accessible at the advisor's office. That's the rule for broker dealers. Records must be kept on paper, that is false. Records must be kept for the life of the firm, not all records, certain records, but not all of them. Records must be kept for investment advisors for five years, two years readily accessible. So if it's a broker dealer question, it's three. If it's an investment advisor question, it's five. So be careful. All are true about private fund advisors, except we are looking for what is false about private fund advisors. They file Form PF, that is true, it stands for private fund. They are registered federally. Form PF is not available to the public, that is true, it is a private fund filing. Form PF is available for the public to view through the IARD. So that is the false statement, which means they are registered federally. Some private fund advisors don't have to register at all. But if you are a private fund advisor that is required to register, you would register at the federal level. So form PF is available for the public to view through the IARD is the correct answer because it's the false statement. Form PF is a not public, it's a private filing. Regarding state registered investment advisors, which statement is false? The home state is the state that an investment advisor has its principal office. That is true. An investment advisor must be registered in their home state. True. 
An investment advisor registered in more than one state will have multiple net capital requirements to meet. False. Let's check the last one. The highest net capital requirement that can be imposed on an investment advisor is that of the home state. That is true. So many investment advisors are registered in more than one state. The strictest net capital requirement that can be imposed upon the investment advisor is that of their home state. So we're picking the false statement. It's right because we're looking for which one is false. An investment advisor has its principal office and is registered in state A and does business in state B with institutional clients. Regarding registration, which of the following is true? The investment advisor should register federally. The investment advisor cannot do business in any other state with institutional clients without registration in that state. That's false. The investment advisor need not register in state B. That is true. The investment advisor could open up an office in state B and not have to register. False. So the minute an investment advisor has an office in a state, it must register in that state. It can do business in another state with institutional clients without registration. And the de minimis rule, which is Latin for a little bit of business with public clients means that they can have up to five public clients or fewer than six in 12 months without registration in that state. But the minute they open up an office there, they must register in that state. So we're looking for which one was true. In this story, there is no business with public clients happening in state B, only with institutional clients. That's it for this week's questions of the week. The topic was regulation of investment advisors. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you learned something, subscribe to our channel, and turn your notifications on. If you'd like to check out Past Masters Securities course offerings or to enroll in any of our programs, there is a link found in this video's description. Keep up the good work. I hope to have you as a student soon. Happy studies. You got this.